guys, Mr. E coming at you. Mr. E pool lessons and quick tips in pool. How you guys doing today? All right, um, I want to share with you guys today. Uh, what happened to me was I'm getting ready for a game. I want to share this with you guys because it's very important, especially the amateur players. The pros do it, so it's good enough for them. It's good enough for us. Um, I have been videotaping um, some of my practice sessions. I have a, a friend of mine that's he's like an eight. <laughs> I mean, he should be shooting pro. That helps me with my game when I'm trying to get ready to uh, play a game. Uh, shot him a video and he said, Aaron, you, you're jumping up too much. Get your jump helmet and you're not doing your pre-shot routine. You're doing your pre-shot routine every other time and then you're missing. Then you come back into the pre-shot routine and you make a shot. You got to be 100 with your pre-shot routine. So I have a special uh, jump helmet here. Um, it's designed to keep your head forward. I had it. It's been in the uh, mark for us a while. Uh, so I got that back out. And I will be shooting shots. I'll be shooting anything. The main thing is to shoot many shots as possible and to get my pre-shot routine together. So I want to show it to you guys and let you know it's important that you video, videotape yourself because you're doing stuff that you're not aware of, that it, but if you see it, you can correct it. So let's keep it moving. The object of this drill is to use your pre-shot routine and make many shots as possible. He not only will know where the sliding cue ball path will go, but he's going to have the skills needed to properly execute the shot. Or as in this shot where the sliding cue ball path heads toward an object ball, now he can simply alter the cue ball path with low spin. And at the same time, he can use right spin to send the cue ball two rails toward the top side rail. Stunt shots are all about feel, since speed and where you start the cue ball have to be in sync. And feel is a result of repetition. So when working with students, we shoot shots like this over and over again so they can develop a feel for speed and where they need to strike the cue ball. Now we're going to go through a few stunt drills. Just spending a little practice time every week working on these drills will really sharpen your cue ball control and speed. For each of these drills, I'm going to show you where I'm striking the cue ball. But remember that stun shots are speed sensitive. So if you're striking the cue ball in the same location, but you're getting a different cue ball path, that just means you need to adjust your speed. In this first drill, we're going to pocket the object ball and turn the cue ball around the second ball. We're going to try to keep the cue ball within two diamonds of the end round. This shot requires a sliding cue ball. As for all the drills I'm going to show you, we won't be using side spin. As you improve, try to keep the cue ball within a diamond and a half of the end round. Try to lay near the second ball's pocket line. The goal is to have a nice shot on the second ball. And when you first attempt a shot, your cue ball may go too far. If this happens, try cutting your speed in half. And this leads to our next principle of stunt shots. When performing stunt shots, as a general rule, as your speed decreases, you're going to be hitting lower on the cue ball. If so you're hitting softer on the cue ball, but your cue ball is striking the second ball or traveling in this direction, then you'll need to strike much lower on the cue ball. If you're striking the cue ball with maximum low, and you're still striking the second ball, then start increasing your speed. As you improve, start moving the cue ball farther away. When I work with students, it usually takes them a little while to develop a feel for this shot. I have perform at least three successful shots in a row from each cue ball location. Eventually, you should be able to execute this shot ten times in a row from each cue ball location. If you're struggling with this shot, then move the second ball to the end round. And just practice drawing the cue ball off the end round for position. Start with the second ball here until you have a shot down, then move the ball to this location. Once you get the shot down, go back to the original drill. Also, try moving the eight ball to different locations. For instance, in this shot, you'll need to strike the cue ball a little above center 
fire to force it toward the target area. This shot is similar to shot one. In this shot, we're going to set the key ball around the second ball for position. The goal is to end up with a nice shot on the second ball. You'll be keeping the cue ball within this area for position. Keep moving the cue ball farther away as you improve at this shot. Next, move the second ball to the next location. This time we'll be keeping the cue ball within this area. Keep an eye on the cue ball when performing the shot to make sure you're not putting accidental side spin on the cue ball. Finally, move the second ball to the final location. You'll be keeping the cue ball within this area for position. In this shot, we're going to try to land the cue ball on or very close to the target area. The goal is to get position on the eight ball. Challenge yourself to shoot this shot three times in a row successfully before moving the cue ball to the next location. With some players, it may take quite a few shots before they have three good shots in a row. All right, guys. I'm going to shoot this video, upload it, so... My training coach could uh, see it, see what he thinks, see if I'm staying down enough or I'm still jumping up too much. But like I said, guys, that's a, a quick tip. I took it from a book of secrets. Videotape yourself. See whether you're jumping up, whether you're turning the backhand of your stick, whether you bring the stick up, whether uh, your stroke is off. You can tell so many things and you can, and you can fix it right away by um, recording yourself play. So that's another quick tip for you guys, the amateurs, that they want to get better and get better quick. Uh, Mr. E hurt his shoulder two weeks ago, and less than two weeks, I'm back on the table. I'm in, I can't truly say I'm not in pain, but I bought a special brace. I've been doing the physical therapy. Uh, I've been really working the shoulder, and I'm back on the table. I've been back on the table about three days now, and I'm getting ready to compete. Um, my wife say I'm crazy, but I love the sport. I'm retired, I don't have nothing to do, and I love to compete. So I push myself to, um, I have a lot of other injuries as well, job-related stuff. So, um, pool keeps me moving. It keeps me from just, just sitting on television doing nothing. So I notice um, when I don't practice, I don't do nothing. I ache real bad, I have to take a lot of pain meds. But when I stay active, when I uh, work out, when I stay on the table, uh, for the period of time that I do able to play, I feel a lot better because I'm keeping keep myself loose. So um, that's Mr. East's quick tip for the day. I will let you guys know how I do. This will be the first time I play since I injured my um, shoulder. So I will let you guys know how I do at that game. And I want you guys to be safe. Um, keep the whole country in in, in the world in, in your prayers because there's some crazy things going on but we need to pray for everybody each other and um try to be safe but i want you guys to continue practicing and practicing hard and also study I want you guys go online and start pulling up stuff uh pre-shot routine uh proper body alignment perfect stroke and pool uh uh and and, and, and get your game together until mr e upload again peace may god be with you